I'm Raihan, Senior Software Engineer at AppScore, and I'm one of the uh, guys doing GPB. So in our upcoming general release, we're going to add support for pivoting to uh, clustering on Kubernetes using GPB. You can now uh, provision and manage everything to clusters on any uh, private or public cloud environment. So at first, what we're going to do is we're going to take a sneak peek at what uh, what will be the flow of this uh, session. Firstly, we're going to uh, have a little discussion on what is RabbitMQ, how does it functions, and we're going to see how can we provision RabbitMQ uh, using QTB. And that, we're going to discuss about the features and specifications uh, that we're going to provide in the, our upcoming release. After that, we're going to jump into directly a live demo session where we will provision a RabbitMQ cluster on our uh, uh, on our local environment. Finally, we're going to have a Q&A session where you can ask me any questions regarding the whole webinar. So firstly, what is RabbitMQ? What does it do? RabbitMQ is actually a multi-language open source uh, messaging tool or a message broker. Uh, it is a simple message broker that can handle a wide range of protocols and can be utilized to meet high scale and high availability requirements in both distributed and federated environments. RabbitMQ server is uh, basically written in Erlang programming language and it is clustered and failover ready. Message queuing allows uh, programs to communicate more effectively by sending out messages asynchronously. It also also functions uh, as a temporary storage location for messages while the destination application is busy or unavailable. Using asynchronous communication, uh, programs that generate and consume uh, messages can communicate with each, uh, each other uh, through a message queue. But the sender and uh, receiver don't have to be available or interact at the same point of time. So, as uh, we have already said, RabbitMQ supports multiple protocols and APIs. Speaking of multiple messaging protocols, it supports Advanced Messaging Queuing Protocol or AMQP and Message Queuing Telemetry Protocol or MQTT. It also provides a variety of client, uh, client libraries and APIs for different programming languages, making it versatile and very much accessible. Then decoupling and scalability is uh, one of its uh, key feature. Uh, when RabbitMQ promotes the decoupling of software components, allowing them to function independently. Yeah, this enhances system stability and, uh, and resilience as components can be added or modified without uh, directly affecting the others. Uh, it is said that in RabbitMQ, each of the components are uh, equal peers in a RabbitMQ cluster. Uh, message durability and reliability is another important feature that uh, RabbitMQ offers. RabbitMQ ensures message durability is uh, a message durability by persisting to uh, the messages to disk, preventing data loss in case of system failure. It also provides features like acknowledgement and confirmations, ensuring reliable message delivery and minimizing the risk of message loss. And finally, what makes RabbitMQ uh, unique from other message brokers or messaging tools is uh, it has flex flexible, very flexible routing and exchange types. Basically, RabbitMQ uses exchanges to route messages to the broker queues. It supports various exchange types such as topic, fanout, or direct. And it offers flexibility in defining message routing strategies and based on applications and uh, specific requirements. Now, this is all, this is all RabbitMQ offers. RabbitMQ have uh, many other features and specification that you can find on uh, RabbitMQ documentation. So uh, RabbitMQ functions as a temporary storage location overall uh, for messages while the destination application is busy or uh, unavailable. So using asynchronous communication, programs that generate and consume messages can communicate with the message queue, but the sender and receiver don't have to interact at the same time. So this is a simple overview of uh, RabbitMQ uh, producer consumer mechanism or how RabbitMQ functions as a publisher subscriber system. 
where uh, you can see that a producer application or a producer sends a message to an exchange instead of directly sending them to the queues. So producer never delivers a message uh, straight to a message queue. Instead, it makes use the uh, straight uh, exchange as a middleman or a middle manager. So the first type of exchange is a direct type or the direct exchange. It uses a message routing key to transport messages to queues. The routing key is a message attribute that a producer adds to the message header. A message is delivered to the queue with the binding key that exactly messages uh, that it really matches the uh, messages routing key. Then we have the topic uh, exchange type. The topic exchange sends messages to queues depending on wildcard patterns between routing key and the queuing or bindings routing pattern. Messages are routed to one or more queues based on the pattern that matches a message uh, routing key. And finally, uh, fan out is one of the most used ones. Fan out exchange is like direct or topic exchange, duplicates the routes and uh, receives a message to any associated queues, regardless of the routing keys or pattern matching. Uh, here you are provided keys. Uh, here, if you provide keys, that those will be entirely ignored. And by default, uh, an unnamed pre-declared direct exchange is uh, uh, is is set as the default exchange type on any rabbit M2 cluster. So, so now we are going to discuss uh, what the skip we can offer and. Uh, how kubedb manages to provision RabbitMQ on any public or private cloud Kubernetes cluster. So this is it. So the user have to create a RabbitMQ custom resource and our kubedb provision operator which watches this continuously watches this RabbitMQ custom resource uh, will be trigger a create option to create operation to create the RabbitMQ cluster. It will create the necessary uh, Kubernetes components, which are required to uh, provision RabbitMQ, uh, such as services, secrets, role, role bindings, uh, persistent volumes, and finally the stateful set to which the RabbitMQ ports will come up. Uh, in this clustering process, uh, in this clustering process, you can, if if any, if at any given time, uh, if you delete, if you want to delete your RabbitMQ cluster, you can set the termination policy that you uh, prefer. Such as if you do want to prevent any kind of accidental del deletion, you can say do not terminate as the termination policy for your cluster, which will prevent uh, or reject any kind of deletion operation on your cluster. You can uh, use the wipeout option for termination policy if you don't want to leave any trace of your database resources once your cluster is deleted. Uh, you can use hold if you just want to uh, keep the secrets and persistent volumes and recreate your RabbitMQ cluster from them. And you can use the delete if you just want to pass the secrets and you get from uh, the secrets. Okay. So this is how QDB uh, provision of RabbitMQ in a very simple manner. So in our upcoming release, what we're coming with, uh, we are coming with some uh, very exciting features such as built-in management UI. The RabbitMQ cluster will have a, it's a built-in management uh, UI uh, and it will be accessible by a primary service. Uh, we are providing lightweight and CBP container UIs, which is basically Alpine based. So it will be really fast to boost up a RabbitMQ cluster. We are providing support for customizable health checker where you can set the health checking intervals. Uh, the health checking, uh, the hero threshold, and you can also disable the health checker if you don't want to want it to run on your cluster. Basically, the health checker uh, che uh, checks the cluster accessibility, accessibility or uh, either you can read or write on your cluster, you can publish messages to your cluster, and you can also consume that. The health checker issues that. Uh, your cluster will be custom configurable. So, if you, uh, if you want your cluster uh, to provide your own configuration, to boost up with, with your own configuration, you should provide a custom configuration secret, uh, which will be used to boost up your cluster. You can, if you want to enable, if you want to enable uh, plugins, uh, 
uh, other than the management one and the Kubernetes peer discovery plugin. We can also provide that in the custom configuration secret and the kubedig operator will uh, bootstrap RabbitMQ cluster with those configurations. Persistent volume, obviously. So you have options to uh, persist or not persist your data uh, on the disk. You can uh, add your preferred persistent volume uh, to uh, provision RabbitMQ cluster. And multiple termination strategy, which we have already discussed. Uh, you are getting multiple termination st uh, strategy for your RabbitMQ cluster, uh, like uh, hold, delete, wipeout, and uh, do not terminate. Do not terminate can be used for accidental deletion. And finally, default security code text. We are setting some security uh, security, uh, security patterns for your cluster so that you don't have to think about security. Your uh, in your cluster, the pods will be run as non root so that uh, any kind of external uh, opportunity to uh, to break your cluster uh, can be easily prevented. So here's how to install kubedb first. You can install kubedb using a very simple Helm chart. So you need to follow the channel release for the as the for the version, and you need a, a, if you don't have if you are not using kubedb right now, you can uh, acquire a license for of a uh, thirty to trial period uh, from our kubedb.com website or uh, or you can contact the Absco team. This is a very simple uh, YML for RabbitMQ uh, that can be used to provision RabbitMQ cluster. As you can see, like any other Kubernetes resource, it has an API version, kind, metadata, and spec section. In the API version, you have to provide the API version, which should be kubedb.com slash v1 over 2. The kind should be RabbitMQ. In the metadata section, you provide the name of the database or the name of the RabbitMQ cluster you want it to be. Uh, I'm going to deploy it as uh, Rabbit Dev in upcoming demo. The namespace is where in the namespace where you want to deploy your RabbitMQ cluster. In the spec section provide the version. So we are starting with uh, so the latest version 3.12.12 .12 support. In the replicas, you can uh, you can provide the number of replicas you want for your cluster. Here I'm going to deploy in the demo with uh, just three replicas. The config secret of a field you can provide your own config secret where you can add uh, add values that you want to set for rabbitmq.conf file or you want you can also provide the enabled plugins that you want to use. In the storage section you can provide the storage uh, features or the storage options like you can provide uh, you can uh, uh, how many uh, how many uh, you want to re you can request uh, uh, how many gigs of me memory you need for on the disk for data persistency, and you, you need to also provide a storage class that you want to use, so that our operator can use them and boost up your cluster with the correct PVC pattern. Storage type here I can set uh, you can set either durable or ephemeral. If you set durable, we uh, the the kubectic operator we create PVCs for your cluster. And otherwise, it will get just simple interactive so, so that if you delete your cluster, uh, no data will be persistent. And the termination policy, you can set wipeout, halt, do not delete, do not delete, or delete. Okay. So I think we can jump into the live demo now. So let's go there. So I'm going to deploy this YML. And before that, I need to show you that I am using. KubeDB, uh, I'm using Kubernetes server version 1.29.0 and client version 1.28.0. And I am going to deploy all of my resources into uh, demo namespace. So let's apply this YML. Okay. Once I have applied this YML, you can see that KubeDB operator here. It has created some services, secrets, and this is the uh, RabbitMQ instance itself. Finally, it is in provisioning state. It will be in provisioning state until it uh, completes all of the resources and uh, provisioning and gets them ready. So this is the primary service. 
which will be used to interact with the cluster. Uh, the clients, uh, any any publisher or consumer client can use this cluster. Uh, this is a headless service. This headless service is for cluster discovery among the ports, and we are providing also a standby service. Okay, all, all, once all of the ports are ready, all the three replicas here that are ready, uh, the revenue cluster will convert to ready status, and now we can interact to our cluster PC. Okay, so. We are going to check into our management UI. So this is the service that you can use. Uh, you can use this port 15672 to access the management UI. And you can use this port 5672 with this cluster IP uh, to subscribe or uh, uh, publish any messages to this cluster. Okay. So as you can see, the operator has also generated uh, this uh, the three secrets. It has provided the Arlen Cook secret, uh, with dev config. Uh, this 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 secret will be containing all the configurations that were used to boost boost up the Revit cluster. The admin credential. This this uh, this secret contains all the administration credential that can be used to consume or subscribe or log into the management. So we are going to. So this is the basic for decoded password and the username for the cluster that we're going to use. And we're going to access this port from our local host. So we are going to port forward the primary service to this uh, 15672 port to our local host port 15672. And then we're going to go to a browser here so so this is our browser so, local host and let's copy the password from here and the username is admin by default so let's the password and login so now we are logged in into the RabbitMQ management UI. As you can see, currently we have seven exchanges by default, one queues to the stream. So this is a queue that is being used for health checking purpose. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new queue to test the basic publication and uh, consuming messages. So there it is, and we're going to create it on the, uh, the root virtual host. We're not going to create any new host. Uh, let's set type to be quorum type. Set the name again. Okay. Let's add the queue. There you can see. We have now a new queue, which is named test. Let's create one exchange. Uh, let's create a new exchange. Which will be named test fan out as we're going to try out some fan out message exchange. Type and durability is durable. We're not going to auto delete our messages at the exchange. Okay, so now we have a new exchange type which is test fan out. Get into queues. Let's hop into this queue and Right now, we don't have any messages here. We have a total of zero messages. Uh, state is running, this queue is running now, and the type is quorum type. As you can see, the leader is a uh, rabbit dev zero port, and all the ports are online. So we can now start a fan out exchange operation. So at first, what we need to do, we need to uh, bind the exchange to this queue. So the exchange we have created is test fan out. So we're going to bind that. We're not going to provide any routing key. So you can see that we have a bindings with test fan out exchange. And now let's publish some messages to it. 
So I'm going to publish a message. So message published. So this is test message two. Let's publish another message. You can see that we have messages two total of two messages. Both of them are ready. Let's publish another message. Three messages. This is test message four. So we have published total of five messages, and below you can. Consume those messages from the CY. You can also see that uh, from this uh, graph chart, that you have total of five ready messages. Now let's publish. Let's consume those messages. It will get messages. Yeah. So here is the first message. This is just message one. This is just message two, three, four, and five. So. This is how you use uh, RabbitMQ uh, to publish and consume messages and uh, provision RabbitMQ very easily with QDB. Uh, basically, uh, it depends on your cluster resources, uh, but uh, typically uh, the RabbitMQ cluster should be up within one minute. So I think uh, this is it. So here's ends our live demo session where we have uh, provisioned a RabbitMQ cluster and published some messages and consumed them through the management UI plugin. So we have reached uh, the q and session now. You can ask me any questions regarding this whole webinar, uh, regarding the whole uh, RabbitMQ provisioning situation. I guess there are no questions. Uh, so I think we can end here.